In this video, I will talk about uh, the nodal analysis method. Uh, first, uh, I will try to understand about uh, the nodal analysis method. And then we take an example in order to further elaborate about the nodal analysis method. So let's uh, watch the video. The nodal analysis method. When the number of nodes uh, in a circuit increase, then the number of unknown voltages increase too. For instance, a three node circuit should have two unknown voltages and two equations. We consider uh, this circuit in order to understand about the nodal analysis uh, method. If you see uh, in this circuit, we have two nodes. This may be node 1 and this is node 2 and uh, this one is node 3 while, uh, while we have a combination of resistances to ohm, 5 ohm and 1 ohm. And uh, we have two input uh, uh, current sources, 3.1 ampere and uh, 1.4 ampere. And this circuit can also be understood by uh, taking this circuit. Uh, uh, this circuit clearly show the three nodes, uh, node 1, node 2 and uh, node 3. So if uh, you see here, uh, we have two nodes, node 1 and node 2. So it's a little bit uh, complex circuit. So we I cannot use a simple KCL or KVL or simple resist, uh, series and parallel combination of resistors in order to solve this. But we need, uh, uh, but we need a proper uh, method in order to solve this circuit, and that is we uh, call it a nodal analysis method in order to solve this circuit. Similarly, a 10 node circuit will have 9 unknown voltages and uh, 9 uh, equations. An N node circuit will have N minus N voltages and N minus N equations. So once uh, we get uh, uh, nodes or once we identify nodes, suppose you see here node 1 and node 2, so then we can uh, easily apply Kirchhoff current law at every node in order to get equations and then we apply and then we apply nodal analysis method to further solve this circuit. We take an example to further understand about the nodal analysis method. For the circuit given here, this circuit, find the voltages and currents across all the resistors find the voltages and currents across all the resistors across R1, R2 and R3 while we have two input current sources I1 and I2. So this is the method is how we can apply the nodal analysis method to the circuit. First indicate the nodes in the circuits. Here we have node 1 having a voltage V1 and here we have node 2 having a voltage V2 and we can have another node which is the third node indicating uh, indicated voltage by a v reference and that is always equal to zero indicate each node with a voltage v1 v2 as i said before if we take it this uh, node one so the voltage of v1 is is supposed to be indicated by V1 and the voltage of this node 2 is supposed to be indicated by V2. The next step is to apply Kirchhoff current law at each node and find the indicated voltages. What this mean? It means that we will apply Kirchhoff current law at this node 1, at this node 1 and we apply Kirchhoff current law at this node 2 in order to find V1 and V2. That is, we first apply Kirchhoff current law at node 1 and we apply Kirchhoff current law at node and 2. Here we have the Kirchhoff current law equation for this node N1, which is uh, equal to IR1 plus IR2 equal to I1. According to the Kirchhoff current law, some of the input currents to a node is equal to some of the outgoing currents. Here we have IR1 and IR2. IR1 and IR2 are the outgoing currents. 
so we make it a sum of these two and then equal to i1 i1 is the input current to node uh, n2 node n1 sorry so we need to find ir1 and ir2 and i1 now here we have the ir1 this is ir1 so that is equal to v1 minus v reference or r1 here we can find ir2 v1 minus v2 over uh, over r2 equal to i1 which is the input current to the node so we further simplify this equation by taking v reference voltage equal to zero here v reference is equal to zero so the above equations uh, can be changed into this form we then further manipulate the above equations here as shown i 1 or r1 plus 1 or r2 into v1 plus minus 1 over r2 into v2 equal to i1 here we got uh, the first equation for node uh, n1 or node 1 here we get uh, the first equation for node 1 having a voltage v1 this is the Kirchhoff control equations for node 2 having a voltage v2 ir2 and uh, i1 or the input currents to this node 2 while i1 uh, while i r3 is the outgoing current to this node 2 so i2 plus i2 equal to i r3 we further rearrange the uh, above equation for further simplifications as you can see here uh, we then uh, find i2 ir3 and uh, we have already the input current i2 so i2 equal to v1 minus v2 over r2 uh, minus uh, what is ir3 that is v2 v2 uh, minus v reference or r3 equal to minus uh, i2 here we get the equations for node n2 having a voltage v2 which is 1 over r1 into v1 plus minus 1 over r2 minus 1 over r3 into v2 equal to minus i2. So you can see we got two equations. This one for node uh, n1 having a voltage v1. And uh, this is the second equation we got for node n2 having a voltage v2. As you know, we got uh, two equations already. This is the uh, equation one, which is the equation we got for the node one. And uh, here we have equation two. This is the equation we got for the node two. So how to solve these two equations in order to find uh, V1 and uh, V2, which are the unknown variables uh, in the, uh, this equation. So we apply the Cramer's rule in order to solve the above equations that is in order to solve or in order to find the values for v1 and v2 here we use the Cramer's rules in order to find the values for v1 and v2 you can see here we have uh, the three linear equations a1x plus b1y plus c1c equal to d1 a2x b2y plus z2z equal to d2 and a3x plus b3y plus c3z equal to d3 so first we take a uh, one matrix let's suppose it is d and that is equal to a1 a2 a3 b1 b2 b3 and c1 c2 and c3 that is we take the coefficients of uh, all these variables from these three linear equations and we make it uh, determine in d so how to find uh, the x is we have three unknown variables x y and z in the above three linear equations so x can be found in this way you can see here we replace uh, this uh, column by column a here you can see and we divide it by the determinant of d matrix and that is weak uh, and that's how we can find the value of x here if you see here 
how to find y we uh, replace uh, the d column here this one by this column by b column and uh, we find the matrix uh, we find the determinant and then divide it by the determinant of d and that's how we can find the value of y if you see here how we can find the value of z we replace the this column by c column here here you can see we find the determinant and then we divide it by the value of the determinant d and that's how we can find the value of c so by using the kramer's rule we can find uh, the value for the unknown voltages v1 and v2 here you can clearly see first we convert the above equation into a matrices form uh, here uh, we have a uh, the matrix A, this one, we have a mat the voltage matrix and we have the I matrix here. So first we find the determinant of this matrix which is matrix A and that is how we can find the determinant of uh, the matrix A. Here we see this uh, multiplied by this and this uh, multiplied by this that is how we can find the determinant of a matrix a so once uh, we get uh, the value for the determinant of the matrix a we can find the value for v1 that is the value for voltage v1 as you can see i1 uh, minus i2 minus uh, 1 over r2 minus 1 over r2 minus 1 over r3 we take the determinant of these values and then we divide it and then we divide it by the determinant of a here you can see how we can get the value for v1 i1 into this is i1 i1 into this value minus 1 over 2 minus 1 over 3 minus uh, minus i2 into minus 1 over 2 and then divide it uh, by the determinant of a so how to get the value for the v2 which is the voltage here at node v2 so here you see uh, 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2 1 over r1 i1 minus i2 so we get the determinant of this matrix and divide it and divide it by the determinant of A. Here we can get the value for V2 minus uh, I2 or 1 over R2 plus 1 over R2 minus 1 over R1 into 1 over R1 divided by the determinant of A. So once uh, we get the values for V1 and V2, we can then find easily the current across each resistor and the voltage drop across resistor as shown below using the ohms law we can get current and voltage drop across each resistor as i said here we have ir1 which is v1 or r1 v1 or r1 we can get ir2 you see v1 minus v2 over r2 and here we can get uh, IR3 which is equal to V2 over uh, R3 and here we can get VR1 VR1 is the uh, voltage drop across the resistor R1 and here we get the VR3 which is the voltage drop across uh, R3 resistor and here we get the VR2 which is the voltage drop across uh, R2. So in this example, you saw that we have uh, successfully solved the, this circuit by using the nodal analysis method. We first identified two nodes, node N1 and node 2. We then uh, assigned uh, the voltage V1 to node 1, V2 to the node 2, and then we also identified V reference node and then we applied Kirchhoff current law at every node we find uh, equations we got two equations one for node and one and one for node and two 
and then we applied the Kramer rules after that using the Kramer rules we successfully find v1 and v2 and once we get v1 and v2 we were then able to find the ir1 ir2 ir3 vr1 vr3 and vr2 uh, in the next video, we will take uh, some uh, other examples in order to further elaborate about the nodal analysis method. Thanks for watching this video and have a nice day.